Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode's about entrepreneurship, and I wanted to share with you something that I learned in the, in the course of my business that I didn't know at the start, which turned out to be incredibly valuable and really, really helpful. I got help with this from somebody else, and so I hope that this can be helpful to you too. And it's about tracking what's going on in your business. I am of the opinion that tracking is absolutely vital and that business plans are actually largely a waste of time. You know, there's a lot of software out there and books out there to help you when you're doing a startup with writing your business plan, and it's all about projecting where you think the market's going and how big you're going to be and how many people are going to employ and what your sales are going to be and so forth. And I did all of that. And as soon as we actually started the business and got going, that plan went out the window you know, reality turned out to be quite different to what I had anticipated. You know, when I originally started uh, my business, I thought that we would be developing an application service provision model where we would have software online that our clients would use for the specialist type of computer modeling and simulation that we did. And it turned out that that's just not what people wanted. They wanted a solution provided to them. Um, And that really meant doing consultancy work, which is not what I originally wanted to do. But that was the way that the business uh, developed. And and so none of that was in the business plan. It was all a complete waste of time, what what we'd written. Um, And a lot of effort can go into business planning. You know, and I really agree with the phrase um, that uh, I think it was in the book Rework by Jason Fried, where he says, you know, business plans should be called business guesses because that's what they are. And so there's nothing wrong with writing business plans. You know, I think they can be helpful and, and, you know, it's really helpful to have a vision of where you're going. But the amount of effort that people put into them, I think, often is wasted. On the other hand, there is surprisingly little effort put into tracking what your business is actually doing, what the reality of your business is once you get going. And what I've found is that the most valuable asset that you have is your business intelligence, your databases of, you know, your contacts in the market of what's going on. And the most useful information that you have is through tracking what the reality of your business is, not your plans. Now that might sound a bit abstract. And, you know, I want to provide some examples of the kinds of things that you can track so that um, you can get a handle on this. But just to explain, The more you can track what you're doing, the better you are able to be conscious about how your business is evolving, what the changes are, and so forth. And that information itself will guide you into making new decisions and allocating your resources and your time and, you know, driving the business forward. So tracking is absolutely vital. So this podcast is about building up databases to do with your business. It's about becoming an expert in your business and in all facts related to your business. I think you should measure everything that you can measure um, about your business and treat, you know, treat it as your job to be an expert in everything to do with the phenomenon that is your business, because that data is the most valuable thing that you've got in many ways. So what kind of databases should you build? What should you be tracking? Well, obviously, that is differs for, from business to business. And so I just thought I would give you some examples from my experience um, of our business. And I'll just rattle off some examples of the kinds of things that we tracked. Some of them may be more relevant. Some of them may be less. Um, and, you know, you can come back to this later if you're sort of thinking about specific issues at the moment and other issues later down the line. But I just thought it might be helpful for you to hear some of them. So first off, the most basic one, an obvious one, is 
obviously you will be tracking your accounts you'll have to for tax purposes anyway so you will have you will be producing annual accounts but those will be generally backward looking now there's loads of things that you can track to do with financial indices um, related to your accounts and I'm not going to go into them in detail here because you can buy a book on ratios a book on um, management accounting and look at all of the different things that you can track to help you with your business but I will say one thing which is I think the most important thing that you can do and this is from day one is to start tracking forward cash flow have you a spreadsheet set up so that you can predict cash flow in the next you know three to six months or indeed as far forward as, as you realistically can and so that you know when you're going to be paying what bills and when you're going to be receiving which payments it's so easy to look at you know annual numbers and think well we're going to make enough to pay the bills but the cash flow um, to be so out of sync that you know you actually get sunk because you just cannot make payroll or you can't pay the bills because you have clients who haven't paid their invoices on time and so forth so it's really really crucial to get a spreadsheet up and running for your forward cash flow as soon as you possibly can if you don't know how to do it get someone to help you find one of the ones online you know get it set up and track what is going on with your cash flow that is absolutely the most valuable thing that you can do um, as far as accounting is concerned and you know when you do that you you can start tracking things like who the late payers are and you can rank your customers in terms of their uh, payment reliability and that can give you very useful information about which customers you know are really causing you more problems than that than they're worth and so this is something that i think is absolutely crucial to track early on is forward cash flow in accounts as i said there's hundreds of other things to do with your financials that you can track and i won't go into that here because really that's a, a very generalized um, thing that you can read up on elsewhere but um but the cash flow accounting is is the critical one another really really beneficial thing to track consciously is your sales pipeline or your opportunities or your potential sales whatever you however you want to call it you know building some kind of database of potential fee earning stuff coming in of business opportunities or sales opportunities is so valuable and so the kinds of things that we tracked because it was a consultancy we tracked on a per project basis the potential projects that we had uh, that we that could be coming in and we looked at what the potential fee would be what we rated the probability as that meant that we could check the fee times the probability so that we would have an adjusted fee and you know of what was in our pipeline we looked at when the start date would be whether or not a uh, uh, an official proposal had been issued or whether it was still at the early stages we looked at the origin of each of these um, potential projects you know whether it was initiated by the client themselves whether it was a follow-up from a previous project whether it was through partnering or through active sales activity and so forth or a referral and we looked at you know things like what division it was in was it uh, what tra what sector was it in so in in my particular business it was things like retail or transport and so forth and this allowed us to do things like look at what the forward pipeline was in terms of volume what we expected to get um in you know if further out than than a, um, just a, f a couple of months uh, we looked we were able to look at what the probability um p for different sectors were um, we were able to look at um, where our work was coming from, who, which sectors were we had more work in and, and less work in over time, and so you know that really helps guide where you're looking for work in the future. Leading on from the potential projects or sales database, we had a project of live projects, actual ongoing fee earning work and for us this was actually the same database it would it was entirely linked so all the information that we'd gathered about our sales opportunities and to do to do with you know the sector and with the origin of the work and everything that was all still in the live project database 
And for us, the live project database was all about tracking the profitability at a project level. Now, that might be different if you have a, um, a product-based business, you'd be tracking profitability at a product level, or it might be different in different types of, of, of businesses that you have. But essentially, the key point is you're tracking all the data that you can to do with what the profitability of your different business activities is, whether that's your different projects or your different products or a combination of those things and all the data that you can gather to do with how much money um, or how much contribution each individual project is giving. So in other words, the project profitability or project margin, um, that is really, really uh, key uh, to, to showing you you know, which projects are worth doing and which are not worth doing. And that helps you to guide and grow the business into those more profitable areas and to address what to do about those products or projects that just aren't making a profit for you. So that's another way in which this kind of tracking really helps you, um, you know, decide on the direction of your business. Now, as well as the sort of sales pipeline and your live projects and your accounts so in a, in a way linking all those things together um, is your database of people you might have call this your contacts database or it might be your client database or whatever we had a database of people and those people had various roles. They can either be clients or they, they might be partners or they might be referrers or they might be uh, suppliers and so forth. But in, in business, every single opportunity doesn't just float in, in the clouds. It's always attached to a person. And so, you know, whatever it is that you're considering, it's always related to one or more people. And your contacts database um, is absolutely vital and an enormously valuable, probably the most valuable resource that you that you will build up um, in in the work that you're doing. And there's a huge amount of data that you can ca um, uh, that you can uh, gather related to your contacts database. You know, you can look at, for example, for individual people, the number of um, projects that they have given you if they're a client. You can look at the success rate of the um, projects that you've attempted to get from them. So in other words, how many sales have you attempted and how many have been successful? Um, you can look at whether or not how many you can look at um, your who has referred you projects. So who is how many projects have different people referred to you? You can look at who your partners are, how many projects you've done together with other people and all of this, you can you can start to really build up a picture of who the really valuable people are that are supporting and helping grow your business. You know, who is it you keep working with? Who's given you more contacts to other people who you work with? Who's brought more work to you? You can look at obviously for individuals how profitable individual projects are with different people, and you can also track things like your activity to do with meeting people. So, for example you can look at the number of new people that you have met per month and how many new potential clients have you met per month? How many face-to-face -face meetings have you had with clients per month? So these are all uh, metrics related to people and your connection with other people and the kinds of activities that, that come from, um, from them. And that data helps you decide, you know, which, what kinds of different people in different industries and different sectors you need to do more work with or less work with, who to really, um, you know, who, which relationships are the most value that you need to spend more time in, in developing and growing and supporting and which relationships, uh, you know, are not bringing value. And so that's a hugely uh, important kind of data that you can gather. Now, with regard to marketing, um, especially if you have any kind of web-based business, there obviously this is something that the data that you can get now is fantastic. You know, uh, there's so much good information you can get about activity on your website. 
both from the number of unique visitors and where they're coming from and what they're clicking on and what they're clicking through to and what they're not clicking and so forth. That's all great stuff. And there's lots of information out there about that kind of data. So I think that kind of marketing information, uh, so tracking, tracking that kind of information for marketing purposes, um, how many people are you reaching, is really, really useful. But there are other types of marketing database that we had that I think it's really worth tracking. So, for example, we looked at the number of press articles published about us in each month. We looked at the number of um, uh, conferences that we attended. We looked at the number of people that we met at each conference or trade fair. We looked at the number of presentations that we gave at marketing events or conference events and so forth. And, and that really helps to see what you are proactively doing to increase your um, relationships within the industry and stuff. Now, my company was in the business to business uh, area. So conferences and trade fairs were, you know, were important to us. It may be that you have other types of events that you could be presenting at or reaching out to. And those are things really worth tracking and, and you know, looking at what you're doing because it will help you realize that, you know, whether or not you really need to get more serious about getting, putting yourself out there and getting yourself known um, to potential customers and clients. The other thing that you can do, you know, as well as tracking through your website, there are all sorts of ways of tracking the value of specific marketing activities that you do. You can use different emails for different marketing campaigns to see which ones are bringing in most responses. You can even use different phone numbers for different marketing campaigns to see which ones, you know, where your, your clients are coming from. So there's all sorts of things that you can do uh, in that way. And the last kind of thing that, that you know, it's worth looking at is how you are tracking the resource of your own time. Now, we had, because it was a consultancy business, we had quite detailed tracking of time spent on projects because really time was a, you know, one of the key resources um, that we had to, to put into the work. But I think whatever you're doing, even if it's a product-based business, your time is really important. And so the question is, how are you spending it? And you can either do this by tracking your time or you can do it by setting rules for yourself about, you know, always spending two hours each morning on doing sales activity only or whatever it is or spending one day per week doing, you know, new project proposals and one day a week doing internal stuff only. Whatever it is, you can do that kind of thing. But how you track time and how you track the, you know, the investment of time in different things is really important. We had a database where we logged on and tracked time in real time on individual projects. So we always knew at the end of each week how much we'd spent on any particular project. And so that's another thing to think about tracking. So I hope those examples are useful. They're, obviously, that's not an exhaustive list. There's lots of other things that might be more relevant to your particular industry. And that's just some of the things that we found useful to track. And, you know, like Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. I really do believe the unexamined business is not worth building. Because reality, when you get going in your business, will always be changing, will always be different to your plans. So how do you best adjust? How do you best adapt? Uh, well, by tracking reality and by seeing what's actually going on so that you have the best information available to make conscious decisions about how to adapt, how to change, and where you want to direction your business. That, I think, is, is uh, far more valuable than just um, you know, setting a very abstract business plan um, and then ignoring uh, the differences that you encounter when you go about doing it, which is a danger I think we can all potentially fall into. Um, so I hope that's helpful and good luck with tracking your business. Um, love to hear any feedback. If you, if you have any thoughts about this podcast, please feel free to leave comments on the website, uh, thevoluntarylife.com, or to email me at jake at thevoluntarylife.com. And thank you so much for listening.